could start my topic by asking you guys to finish a phrase for me. Life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And ask you again. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Does anybody know where that's from? Declaration of Independence. So, this is a phrase that I immediately thought of when thinking of the subject of euthanasia, or voluntary euthanasia, or physician-assisted suicide. So Thomas Jefferson basically said that every human has unalien unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All of you enjoy these rights every single day, but imagine for a moment if you did not enjoy liberty or even the ability to pursue happiness which is what most people live for. How many of you get up every day and plan to be miserable and just wake up and say, how am I gonna make my life suck today? <laughs> no way, right? Unfortunately, there's millions of terminally ill patients that do not enjoy this. They're suffering every day, they're confined to a hospital bed, they barely have the liberty to decide what they eat. And I'm not sure how much happiness you can pursue from a hospital bed and knowing you're gonna die in a few moments. Now that I've gotten started off with that, I'm going to go across my main points that I'm going to bring up. Basically, what I'm trying to communicate is that many terminally ill patients are deprived of a fundamental right to die in a dignified manner and to be relieved of suffering. So, I'm going to go across how euthanasia would provide these patients with relief and a dignified death how it is beneficial in the healthcare spectrum and how it is a fundamental right that is intrinsic to every human life and essential to every person's well-being. Okay, so terminally ill is a medical term that basically states that um, an illness is going to result in inevitable death despite any intervention to try to attenuate it. So, it's physician-assisted death is only legal in Washington, Oregon, Montana, and Vermont right now. And according to the CDC and their government websites, there's over one million terminally ill patients in the United States, and 55% of them do die in great pain and agony and anguish. And I, that's really not a dignified way to die. So, euthanasia would provide the option to, I guess, accelerate the process and without having to go through any of the pain or any of the, uh, any of the repercussions. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about how it would be beneficial in the healthcare spectrum. So, um, I read an article on USA Today called Debate Sounds End of Life Healthcare Costs and it states that keeping a person alive that's terminally ill for a year racks up $129,000 worth of expenses every single year and that goes to the families, there's more expense, that's, that's for the families themselves or for whoever's paying. There's also expenses racked up by the facilities and the healthcare system in general. 27% of Medicare's annual $327 billion budget, and 1% of a billion is 10 million. Then multiply that by 27, then by 327, that's an exorbitant amount of money. It's spent towards keeping a person alive in the last year of life. So that's just for one, for one year, spent towards keeping all the people alive. Also, another problem that the nation faces is emergency room and hospital crowding. Who here has ever been to the ER and it took forever to get seen? I remember when I broke my nose, I was literally there for like six hours and I was worried because I thought I was going to look like Toucan Sam forever. <laughs> so I was, I was pretty freaked out. And the thing is that when, when you're keeping a person alive, you're not really prolonging life, you're prolonging death since it's inevitable and all of that space and resources and budget could be, could be allocated towards 
um, preserving the life of people that actually need it or that can benefit from it. And actually, a lot of these people are not selfish. And um, they, if given the choice, they would take it immediately. It's not always forced upon. That's why it's called voluntary. So, how many of you believe if you have the right to life, then it's kind of implied that you have the right to death? If you have the right to remain silent, does that mean that you have to remain silent? You can talk if you want, right? So, in the legal perspective, um, basically if you have the right to life, it's really, really implied that you have the right to die if you want. I'm not going to go too much into religious, because I'm going to assume statesman grounds and not go into that, but this country does give you freedom of religion. And, uh, I think that kind of ties in with the whole legal thing. A lot of people have religious arguments, but we do have freedom of religion, which does entitle you to your own choice. Um, basically, it's, 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 really a tr it's really a choice of the person, and a lot of these people are suffering. In the Netherlands, uh, there isn't a United <coughs> Kingdom article that's uh, on the Telegraph. It's a United Kingdom-based newspaper, and it has an article called Number of Dutch Killed by Euthanasia Rises by 13%. So the Dutch, they're all for euthanasia. They've had it legalized for 10 years, and that's actually the old rate was 9%, so now it's 21, about 21% or so deaths or, um, of terminally ill patients have been by euthanasia, and 9% of the total deaths, total deaths, not just sick people, have been by euthanasia. And it says that 80% of the people do die at home and they die peacefully and painlessly. Uh, to close, I went over my main points, why uh, why it, it would relieve people from suffering and from all the pain and anguish they're going through. I also covered why it would benefit the healthcare system, not only the healthcare system, but the taxpayers that fund it. And I went over why it's an essential right to every human, the right to die. So to close by not legalizing euthanasia, we're depriving a very essential right to people that need a dignified way out. And if somebody wants to die or kill themselves, because suicide amongst terminally ill people is very high, they will do it if they really want to. But this would provide a cleaner way out and a much more dignified way out.